and welcome to my matchbox lots of super 7 build and here we have the actual example I'm building as per usual on this model it's lost its screen along the way and unusual for it is it hasn't got buckled wheels which these tend to pick up buckled wheels as well but all in all it's not done too bad if you really really want a good one with a screen the way to go for this model is really a mint box because when they were played with more often than not they lost the screen as this one has but it's looking that its wheels aren't the right there is buckling to the front wheels and that's perfectly normal, you'll probably find that on almost all of them that have been played with. And here, uh, drilling out the base, ready for drilling and tapping. For the M2 screws I use, some use hexagonal screws, so I use, I just use the old fashioned type Phillips or crosshead, whatever you want to call them and there we are the base is unclipped then it shuffles forward it's held in by the grill and here we are drilling the posts I use about, I think it's about a 1.7 milli drill and then the tap takes it up to 2 milli and it's the quite nice posts on this model as per usual I pretty much always drill through I should really put a bit of paint or a piece of tape on my drill bit to give me the depth but I never do and there we are that's that one done I'll move on to the next one now And here we go. This one came along quite a bit faster than the other. And there we go through. And here I'm drilling out the old windscreen. As it's, it's left in the clay part inside. So I'll drill that out and ready for a scratch, scratch build one out of styrene sheet. A basically clear plastic card. And here I'm tapping out the holes to two millis. Frankenstein? What are you doing up there? Have you got your testicles out? No! Don't put them in the- <coughs> What on earth are you doing, Frankenstein? Get down here at once! And how long has he been in there? Check his fingers to see if they're wrinkled. I bet he's only paid once and swapped his locker over. Anyway, here we go. And here, I'm wire brushing the bodywork to get the remains of the paints off. And this part, I've got a drum sander and sanding off seam lights. And there was a pimple there on the fender, I suppose Americans would call it. We'd call it a mug guard. And here, Jim will be glad to know I'm using JB Welt for a tad of filling on a couple of spots around the bodywork. Yeah. 
quite quite a good product I'm quite impressed I'd imagine it's better for some things than others they like but it's worked good as a filler there it's a good I've got to admit it's a good solid filler and here we have just the bodywork just doing the back the pair of holes where I drilled through which is getting to be an habit with me I've got to admit I've done it once or twice still never mind at least you know you're deep enough and there we are trying to get it to the contours of the back it's quite a bit quite difficult with that sort of grilling going on and here I'm sanding the JB weld back to give a smoother finish I'm use, I use a roughish wet and dry first I use it dry and then I'll go in after with the smoother wet and dry and use it wet with a little bit of washing up liquid in it's always good to use soap on your final rubbing down with smooth wet and dry I used to do it on real cars when I were doing the paint so basically what's good for real ones is good for these you'll probably go down to finer wet and dry papers really because you've a uh, lot less paint going on compared to a real car like some things some imperfections in your body work will be hidden by paint by no means all of them though but as you go down the scales it becomes less so and here I'm using Solver Water Sol to polish up the base make it more like a chrome effect and it's quite a nice base on this really it's got the prop shaft, the diff the suspension and gearbox at the front it's quite, quite detailed really for a little car it was quite a popular one as well and boy when you got this one on the track if you had a super fast track <laughs> could it shift it was a quick little thing anyway no axles really fitted the width of it so I used some brass bar stock just cut it off with my clippers there and I glued I glued them onto the bar it was a decent fit but they were a little slack and they'd fall off it so glue came into play I super glued them in then squirted it with zip kicker so it was fast drying but there we are half a chassis we want on I've used green light wheels I've used a uh, set from the Mopar set which I had all sorts of wheels really and they all worked out too small there was only this set that would really do the size I wanted but it fills it quite nice and sits nice with them so job done but now my more par set is adios so I'll probably order another one buy some from over in the states probably buy a couple because I want some four wheel drive ones of the green light as well and here I am cutting down the bar for this side move a bit further in you have to judge it for how well you want it what's gonna disappear into the wheel 
roughly. And there we are, now it's any second it'll be done. Oops, a daisy. That's where I stuck it in my finger. Stung a little. And anyway, there's the chassis with the wheels on. Quite a pretty set of wheels with the red lines. Probably suits a British car the other way around without the red lines because Brits didn't really go for the red lines on tyres that much. Apart from perhaps on chopper push bikes or grifter push bikes, I it weren't really followed heavily here. And here I'm starting the colour, laying the colour onto it. I'm starting with yellow at the front. Unfortunately I got a paint reaction, I think it was because I didn't put enough of the yellow on and I didn't blend it enough where the two meet for me fade because I, I do a fade on it and I think what's happened when I've sprayed the clear on I think it's reacted with a silver undercoat under the green stuff world inks but it actually, I've actually built it anyway because the reaction's only at the front where the yellow fade is into orange and it actually makes it look a bit like snake skin so it actually quite suit the, suits the car really so I thought oh I'm leaving that on it looks okay it'd have been nicer if it could have reacted a bit tidier but hey eh, oh. One of them things. But yeah, this green stuff world candies, I'm just starting getting used to using them. You know. And they're an ink rather than a paint. But they do give some astronomical finishes. I do have to say I like them. Especially this orange. This orange is beautiful. It's a really vibrant orange. It's not to its full extent though, so you can't tell yet. But it's starting to build up and that's a beauty with candies really. You can build them up to however whatever colour depth you want. I could have done a bit more and got it darker but when you're going towards the darker end of them especially with light colours you can start to lose a bit of detail with the layers but this one it we were just right just nice something that I'm quite impressed with and there you can see a little bit where it's reacted but it's made it look a little like snake skin so it didn't really worry me that much I think it's because the silver's reacted underneath because the colours were too thin but hey ho such is life And here's where we started from. A dull and battered old play one example of the Lotus Super 7. And the, the real cars are cracking really quick, although the Caterhams today. Caterhams took over the builds of them. But back in the day when they were Lotus, they, they were great fun seeing them on road. We got, I was sat in the back of our family car one day and got blasted by one of them. Anyway, here we go. 
There's the finished article and it's looking a lot nicer with its new paint job and new wheels and also acquiring its screen. It looks like a Lotus 7 or Caterham should do. The pipes are polished and everything looks good. Very little detail painting because there's very little bodywork details on it really. In fact this one it must be more of a track car because you find deadlights on it. So it has to be either a track car or a daylight only MOT here in the UK. You can get them certified as daylight only if you don't fit headlights. 